Hello, Nerd Nighters. This is vlog number five for me, David Shepard, about the uh, DFW NN uh, game design competition. Uh, basically, checking in and following up before I start talking about any of my game designs, uh, JR had asked about uh, the chits offered from the game crafter. Uh, in the card and board game designer forum and I can officially report because I just got mine in they are pretty good uh, this is actually the circle chits as you can see they come 15 to a row and punch out that easily uh, there is a little bit of crinkling on the surface sticker but only because there's a massive amount of pressure that gets applied to these in order to create these easily punchable little things. Now, I will say vast majority of the chits that I got in, because I uh, got them in for one of my game designs, uh, basically I was trying to reduce the amount of wood in the game uh, in order to make it a little bit more affordable or at least presentable. Uh, so I ordered a test run of 450 chits just to make adjustments of certain games as well as to see if certain game designs would become viable in the future. Uh, for the most part, vast majority of these have come back pretty clean. Uh, there is one sheet, however, that you can see on most of them, there's a little white border about how they go. One of them did have a large amount of drift that did get applied uh, but whether or not this is the fault of mine or the uh, printer is ultimately one of those things that you know 15 out of 450 to come back free and clear not much I can complain about so uh, it does have some of the white on the actual chit itself but I also stayed outside of the blue guideline on most of this artwork. So the cutting off is basically my fault because I didn't understand the template. Uh, but that's why this was a test run on the chits. They're relatively affordable, so uh, we'll make a couple of my uh, future game designs actually more viable. But just a quick overview of what these chits and how they apply uh, will be so hopefully JR that helped you out uh, now I had mentioned the uh, battle game earlier and I got a little bit more of the components for the uh, play test sorted out uh, such as as you can see here a bit of a health bar these are the three track cards and the initial placement uh, super moves that the various characters can use as I said if you actually apply them to uh, certain characters uh, they will use the abilities triggered and these abilities can also be uh, boosted by powering them with crystals but for the most part most of the cards are things like um, like this. So move one space away from the uh, character that is in the higher portion is the first priority. Uh, second portion is the uh, secondary priority. The reason for that is most of these cards can be applied to all three of the fighters. Uh, however, if you play a card, like let's say you're playing the uh, this card, again, uh, one of the characters is Bowman, and if you play this on the Bowman character, uh, basically he's not going to move away from himself, so he'll pick the uh, secondary character, Hammer Mouse, which, uh, speaking of the characters themselves, naturally uh, some people are familiar with these characters, but this is officially Hammer Mouse. And generic bowman. I can't use arrow. 
CW will get mad at me. And Panduiki, which will be the three fighters that are actually in the game. So how they move onto the track and then afterwards they get to use one of uh, several types of attacks. Some may block, some may do a wide variety of basic things. And keeping in mind this is also like a uh, gambling game. So you're not really playing these characters directly. You are loading up programs into their three character program cards, uh, which means at the beginning of the game you're going to be gambling. This was a bit tricky because in a perfect world I could just slice a card three ways and then say, okay, well, here's the three characters, stack them, and how you think they're going to finish first, second, and third. Uh, unfortunately, don't really have that option, so I came up with this solution where basically on the other side of the card you're going to place your marker on which of these selections you think is going to be how the game is going to end. And based on uh, those are how you're going to score points at the end of the game. So how can you just take a look at this and those being familiar with the game, oh, well, they're betting on E, so they're hoping this one works. Well, not all E's are the same. In fact, all six of these cards represent the three different... Uh, variations in which the game can actually uh, end with all three rankings. So everybody's going to get a different card, so whenever they gamble on A, B, or A through F, you're not going to know how they're betting based on which chit, th or which letter they put their small chit on. Uh, so that was the third uh, game concept, and now I'm going to talk about the fourth, because in all honesty, the fourth was the one where I had the mechanic, I just didn't have a game to go with it. And what I mean by that is JR had mentioned that you can cut down the cards to create all new components that don't necessarily need to be cards, just be careful on the aspect of being origami. Uh, in which case, I present to you... Ooh, what is that? Well... Basically what it is, is it is the base card for what is going to be a blimp combat game. Uh, similar to combat games like uh, X-Wing, but the gimmick is going to be... Over here on your left is going to be the movement gear. And over here on your right is going to be the attack gear. Now, secretly... Um, you're going to pick which one of these you want to adjust by a set number of clicks. At the end of each round, they are going to automatically click one space based on which direction these gears turn. So automatically, the blimp is going to be changing its behaviors from round to round. And then, as you can tell, you have uh, three circle spaces down here where you can actually uh, place your circle die or circle marker but only one around in how many clicks you want to move one of these three dials uh, there is also a health meter right here where the crystal will go down and then a number of ships here now because of these components are relatively cheap and then all you really need is the uh, blimp cards to go out onto the table itself there's going to be a fair number of cards that are going to be left in the game which could probably be used towards uh, game variants like creating a gun tower or uh, creating debris, various mazes, stuff like that that you can have players go through. Uh, it's going to be kind of difficult to control these blimps, but that's intentional. And then the question is if it's even fun to play these blimps. Uh, both of these games are getting their components are all ready to test and I'm just waiting for a chance to actually test. But I will say as far as uh, production on these games themselves going into the competition, uh, I'm currently involved in a game con or a game design competition called Kudo Plays and that has a final turn-in date of February 13th 
And in order to get my cards in on time, I'm going to have to be wrapping that up here in the next couple of days, uh, which means I'm not going to really have time to talk about how I'm going to go forward with these game designs here. Uh, but I will give uh, impressions and reports based on how they play uh, because, well, during my lunch hour at work, I'm going to have some uh, playtesters to help me out on uh, giving these a shot and seeing if there's anything uh, worthwhile in them as far as uh, game entries in the competition. I have a feeling that of the, uh, of the four, the one that intrigues me the most is obviously the COG mechanism, uh, and that would be really interesting to see how that actually plays out but it may be one of those mechanics that has the uh, right idea, wrong game, and in which case it's probably not going to make it up in this competition and instead be considered something uh, closer to um, like a worker placement or empire building style game. Uh, so I'm hoping that one works out. The blind gambling with the programmed movement game is also one of those that's kind of up in the air, not sure if it's going to work out or not. Uh, I'm going to be testing it with a few computer engineers, so I'm sure whatever I do with it, they're going to hopefully enjoy it, but I'm not sure yet. And once again, just because the engineers love uh, programming games doesn't mean everybody else will. Uh, so in regards to actual mass appeal, I have a feeling that my winner going forward is more than likely going to be the Zoo the Man game concept because, well, I haven't really seen anything like it and it's a type of game that can uh, easily be, even if I don't win, it can easily be finished as a game and thrown up on Game Crafter where uh, it'll probably sell two or three copies, but oh well. Two or three copies sold is better than none. So uh, that's me signing off, and hopefully I wasn't too emo this time. See ya.